And welcome to another edition of South Texas Crossfire. This is attorney Joe Flores reminding you to join us each and every week right here on KTMV with the Lopez family. Special thanks to Don Humberto. He passed away, but he's the patriarch, and we honor him on each and every show. And my good friend, Carlos Lopez, you guessed it, the Ted Turner of South Texas Broadcasting, right here on KTMV, and Time Warner with a couple of hundred thousand subscribers strong. Uh, with me today, I have the distinct pleasure of bringing on attorney Juan Reyna. Welcome, Juan. How are you? Good to see you, Joe. Hey, it's a pleasure as always. Uh, Juan, today, uh, I know that uh, we both agreed that we want to talk about something that impacts not only the elderly, but the disabled, but also impacts businesses and commerce in South Texas and the United States, and that is healthcare. Um, now, uh, for those of the, the audience that don't uh, know what you practice, you also practice healthcare law, and what does that encompass? Well, Joe, like you, uh, we've been practicing for over a decade, and. Uh, we've had a wide variety of experience in terms of representing health care providers. Um, you know, we started out, you know, over 10 years ago representing hospitals and physicians and health care providers who would get accused of some form of uh, med mal or some type of malpractice. Uh, much of that has uh, changed uh, since tort reform back in 2002-2003. And over the last 10 years, what you have found uh, as a result of these tort reforms is uh, less people being able to have access to the courtrooms, and so they are taking their complaints to the respective boards up in Austin uh, that uh, the health care provider, uh, their, their conduct uh, has deviated from uh, the normal standards and they're making their complaints up in Austin and seeking administrative remedies and uh, so much of our representation over the last 10 years has been helping health care providers uh, in terms of dealing with those type of complaints before their respective boards whether it be the nursing board or the Texas Medical Board or the pharmacy board uh, you and I have had uh, been in front of those boards on numerous, numerous occasions. Well, and, and I think that a lot of the changing, healthcare is evolving. Uh, we're still at about 15% of GDP is healthcare in the United States. And with that can come a lot of tremendous responsibility. Uh, you know, I, I know that uh, we've represented also home care agencies, doctors who have different uh, businesses, but all in all, those people are dealing with often government dollars. That's right. And, and how does that work for the audience out there, for those who, are, who aren't savvy of the healthcare system? H how does that work? Well, sure. I mean, when you're looking at in terms of who's paying the bills uh, in terms of these healthcare dollars, you have Medicare, Medicaid, you have private insurance. Um, in less affluent areas like our, what we have here in the coastal bend and in South Texas, uh, and in a lot of rural areas, uh, historically medically underserved areas, what you find is a situation where there are a lot of Medicare and Medicaid recipients. And of course, what we do, uh, or what they're charged with, of course, is that they bill uh, the government for services provided. And, um, and with that comes enormous responsibilities to make sure that they're doing it right. Uh, that the services are actually provided um, and that they're uh, adequate measures that the government has in place that demand strict compliance. Well, and working in the federal system, I know, and as you do, that uh, uh, they've got a tremendous responsibility. Uh, the Office of the Inspector General, uh, we've got a coordinated effort with Justice Department, with FBI, that are down here and in other areas like Houston, and Florida, I was at the national convention for a home health and hospice, and not, they were talking about nothing but some doctor who had billed millions in Medicare uh, and had gotten away with it, and finally he had to go do some sentencing. Also, home healths are being looked at that uh, really go awry of the law, that, uh, and, and we'll get into that in the second half, what sort of practices, that way the consumer and the elderly person know what we're talking about. But what have you seen in the trend in the last couple of years? Has it been more board issues or, or are we seeing more health care law prosecutions? I think you are seeing more health care law prosecutions. In fact, the United States Attorney General 
uh, Mr. Holder recently gave a press conference talking about the amount of the federal budget that is delegated for uh, health care and uh, what his suspicions were in terms of what is legitimate billing and what is illegitimate billing uh, or false billing and uh, it, the, the numbers were striking. I mean, it's absolutely, you're talking about hundreds of billions of dollars in terms that may be at issue in terms of, um, uh, you know, and just generically, you know, looking at it, what, what they call cooking the books, uh, whether it's false billing, upcoding, uh, rendering services that were never provided. Uh, there's a lot of uh, rampant uh, problems and fraud associated with the healthcare industry, uh, and it, it does nobody a service when that occurs because what you find is healthcare then becomes more expensive, costs us more as taxpayers, and it's something that, of course, we should all be concerned about. Uh, oftentimes, you know, as a lawyer, like yourself, Joe, who has represented people who have been accused of these type of misgivings, uh, of course, you know, there is a presumption of innocence and you have to do your due diligence in ensuring that um, sometimes um, it, it becomes very difficult on a day-to-day -day, uh, operational basis when you're providing health care to um, your patients that, you know, First and foremost, you're concerned as a practitioner of doing a good job, uh, providing the best care possible. Uh, yet at the same time, you also have to have on your compliance hat to make sure that everything's being done correctly. Sometimes, um, unfortunately, things aren't done perhaps like they should. It doesn't mean that there's criminal intent. It just means that perhaps uh, there needs to be a stricter adherence to what the obligations are of that provider. And, so much of our practice is to ensure, you know, quality control assurances and compliance with uh, these uh, strict regulations that are on the books. And um, um, it's been it's been a tremendous experience over the last number of years. Well, and and for the consumer out there, uh, those that are receiving the care, uh, there have been calls that have been placed to me, and often uh, we have presented those complaints to the right agencies, and they've looked into them and. They do a tremendous job. Uh, the Office of the Inspector General is being flooded right now. Uh, offices are being created here in South Texas and down in the Valley, and I'm sure all over the United States. And, and, uh, and I think that people need to understand the magnitude of it. $800 billion, you know, in a short time has been billed. Of that, Eric Holder, uh, the Attorney General, believes that about $300 billion uh, is questionable. That's astonishing. Yeah, it's astonishing, and and near more than a third. So uh, that's being taken into question, and only four percent of that has been really collected back. Um, it is. I'm angry about it because when we look at people creating durable medical equipment companies, uh, stealing people's Medicare information. I mean, Juan, as a provider that's been out there 20 years plus, and I see these people that have no business that have no clinicians running their businesses and they're taking advantage of the elderly, it's wrong. And I always tell the elderly that have called me, hey, there are numbers that you can call. Let people know. But the first thing, you know, often what happens, the complaints I've gotten are, the nurse didn't come out to visit me. Well, sometimes the nurse gets delayed. This often happens when you're out in the rural areas. Right. And I've handled these compliance issues by telling the, the nurse we need to make a good schedule, but sometimes we, um, you know, with a companies that I represent, I'll say, you couldn't go out at 11, but call. Tell them you're running late. Tell them why. Don't just show up the next day and it ruins their routine because right. you're dealing in people's homes. Right. And you're coming into people's homes and you're, and you're providing the care and it's a privilege. But when you don't show up, they'll say, well, they, pro they must have billed for a visit that hadn't been done. Right. Once that ball gets rolling and you didn't do your risk management, you didn't tell uh, the patient that, the patient's under the perception that you're billing them, they're getting a bill, and then they're going to tell uh, whoever they need to tell or I'll advise them to disclose that. And it causes an investigation that can lead to a lot of problems for an agency when there didn't have to be. That's right. And, and I know that compliance issues are a big thing. We're going to talk about that in the second half. 
But we're looking at kickback schemes. We're looking at false claims, upcoding. You mentioned a lot of them. Tell us a little bit about some of the people that you've represented. We've got a couple of minutes. Well, I would never right? go. I would never go into specifics. Just, but, just generally but, but speaking. In, but in terms of, of what's out there, and obviously what the government looks for, is situations uh, involving you know these Stark law violations. That is, you know, physician. where in a phys, you know physician. Um, he has a PA practice, and he has his patients, and then he also owns, you know, uh, a the DME company, and is directing the patients to go and buy the equipment from him. And uh, there are strict measures on the books that say you can't do that, and you have to, at all times, at at, at the foremost of patient care is patient choice, and so a patient must always be have the opportunity and the choice. Uh, to go out and seek uh, their health care, uh, whether it's uh, f services or health care goods, whether it's medication or whether it's uh, durable uh, medical equipment, um, to go and seek that at a place of their choice and not be directed or steered and then there's kickbacks back to the doctor, for instance. Uh, so that's been a big problem. Another big issue that you've seen is, is what they call upcoding. Uh, upcoding is is basically a patient comes in and they're complaining of A, B, and C, and um, in an effort to bill the government more money, you're not just then diagnosing A, B, and C, but you're doing D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, right. in an effort to uh, bill the government more money, so as you can increase your revenue off that one patient. Uh, that's wrong. There's been rampant abuses, and that's obviously something that the government is on the lookout for. Um, the worst case scenarios are, of course, situations where healthcare providers uh, are um, uh, claiming to uh, render services or providing medical go goods which uh, are never provided. That yet, is horrible. Yet they are billing the government. And those are, those are the worst type of examples possible uh, because that's just outright fraud. That is absolutely forbidden, um, and those cases are being uh, heavily investigated and prosecuted uh, because that's about as bad as it gets if you really think about it. Uh, I'm going to get this patient's Social Security number or Medicaid number, and I'm or Medicaid number, and I'm going to bill against that uh, for services that I never even rendered. I mean, you know, often cases the worst examples where they never even saw the patient, and uh, yet you're billing for fictitious visits uh, and fictitious services. Uh, those are the absolute worst type of abuses that are out there and uh, the government has gotten very active in pursuing those cases. Well, and uh, we're going to take a break, but when we come back, uh, you're watching Joe Flores here on South Texas Crossfire with Juan Reina, healthcare attorney, and we're talking about from the consumer side, you've got to be very careful who your provider is. Don't make them influence you when you're getting out of the hospital. You pick this home health or you pick that home health. It's your choice. You're in the driver's seat. Don't let some social worker, discharge planner, or hospital tell you where to go or nursing home tell you not to go home and get home health services. That is wrong. If that occurs, you can have some numbers that are appearing on your screen that you can report things to, or you can call us here for more information at South Texas Crossfire, 887-867-0361, 887-867-0. Dave and I are going to go to some clips to educate you guys on the rampant problem that healthcare fraud is impacting our taxpayer dollar and also how we can fix that. And also for those home health and healthcare providers out there who don't want to go astray of the law, also we're going to have some uh, tips on there and education that can help you. And that way we have a better outcome here in South Texas, everybody above board, and above all, the patient is protected. And that's what matters. We'll be back after these messages. <music> 